Hi, I'm Andy Shaw. I'm a uh, father of three, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about what to do when things just aren't working. It's a parent's guide to making work from home actually work. Now, I want to see if this is a familiar parenting situation uh, for any of you. Um, it's like that tear your hair out kind of feeling that I'm sure many of us have had. Otherwise, we wouldn't be listening to this right now. Um, like many people, I've been working at home um, since March of 2020 um, and have had many other times where I've had to work from home for a variety of reasons since becoming a dad about eight years ago now. Uh, the biggest uh, issue as an ongoing basis is that we have those at-home learning days. I've got three kids and they do attend school in person, but they've had a lot of at-home learning days. And it is, uh, I've, as I've described, like a circus that's spinning on top of a skyscraper. And you're just hoping the whole thing doesn't collapse, like all three rings are just going to collapse at any point. That's what it's kind of felt like, like a no-win situation like you don't feel like a good employee uh, or if you're like running your own business you don't feel like you're doing a good job of that you don't feel like a good parent i know for sure i don't ever feel like a good dad um whenever i'm working at home and trying to help my kids with school um, they have like at home gym class it's a virtual gym class and i'm trying to run a meeting on my end while my kids are like batting paper balls with spatulas all around me to achieve some a uh, crazy <laughs> gym class made up game that the, the uh, teacher had to come up with or spur the moment to help with at home learning. So as I'm focusing here, uh, there's chaos all around me. So that's one of the situations where you just feel like this is not working. How do I find some sanity with all that? So like I said, I'm a dad of three. Um, my name is Andy Shaw I'm from Pennsylvania. I'm a marketing strategy director um, by day and my wife is a college professor and a fitness instructor we keep it very busy um, whenever we're allowed to go out uh, we also do some entertainment as well in the comedy world so we are busy all the time to say the least uh, i've got a seven-year-old who's in second grade and i have twin five-year-old girls um, yeah that's right twin five-year-old girls so if i look like i need to take a nap it's true um, I'm also an author. I've written uh, two books in the past year, uh, The Guy's Guide to Being a Birth Partner, and uh, my first book, which is The New Mom's Guide to New Dads, and this is all about helping moms understand what dads were thinking, because I don't know if you know this, but dads are really bad at sharing their feelings. I have. Uh, I write all this at uh, instafather.com, so in any case, that's the quick background, but uh, I've certainly understood what it's like working uh, from home and trying to balance things. I've definitely been uh, part of the, the pickup crew or the drop-off crew, uh, running kids all over the place, uh, whatever's needed. My wife does a ton of that as well and takes the lion's share of it uh, as much as she can. Um, but I get how tough this is. I'm in Zoom meetings all day. So how can we make this work, the stay-at-home thing work when it doesn't feel like it's working well? Uh, I think it's important, first of all, uh, number one, to define expectations so you know what is a realistic win. So think of it this way. What do you have to accomplish when you're working from home? And that seems almost too general, but really think about it. If I'm working from home today, what do I have to do to feel like I'm successful? And I don't mean like a specific project or like I have to be able to hit all my meetings. It might be broader than that for you. It might be I want to make sure I respond to messages within the hour. I want to make sure my team feels supported. Or if you uh, run your own business, it might be I need to uh, hit certain objectives uh, throughout the month. Like if I don't hit my revenue goals, then I'm going to feel like I'm falling behind, right? If you have a boss, what does that boss expect of you? If you are working from home, um, I'm hoping they have uh, better expectations overall of what you can do. Um, a boss should understand that you're going to have a lot of things being pulled at you, mostly your attention, um, but your boss might have different expectations than you do. And with that in mind, what do you expect personally, right? Uh, I find it took me a while to adjust uh, to working from home after working in an office for so long um, that I had to be really specific about what I expected for you. What's a non-negotiable that no matter what, if it's you or your job or whatever it is, it might be uh, no matter what, I don't ever wanna have to cancel meetings um, because my work from home environment is too crazy. 
or it might be, I don't want to lose out on a promotion this coming year because I don't feel connected enough. Or it might be, I want to make sure my kids feel like I can still pay attention to them when they really need me. Uh, maybe that's non-negotiable for you. There's no wrong answer for that, but it really helps to think about the expectations, okay? So we've got expectations in mind. What can you pinpoint is the actual issue um, for being a work at home parent? And what do I mean by that? So there are a lot of things we get frustrated by if you're working from home. I'm sure you can think of 10 right off the top of your head. But what is this specific thing that you're actually getting frustrated about? I would advise just writing out your frustrations. I don't know, wrote it like this, like you've got a quill, like it's the 1700s, but type out your frustrations, right? Put it out there on a page. And don't think about a specific day. Think through, let's say the past month. What has been a thing that's been kind of driving you nuts? And what are the recurring themes that are happening there, right? Was it the fact that you didn't feel like you had control? Was it something about the environment? Like you felt like you couldn't ever get comfortable, um, that it was always too hot or always too cold. Uh, I have to work in the basement. I'm actually in my basement set up here and it gets very cold and my fingers freeze by the end of the day and that can actually be really aggravating. It could be if you have kids who are learning from home that that's too much or if you have a baby and that's a constant feeding thing and they're changing diapers and that's a lot to take on. Don't just say, man, it's so hard working from home. Um, or just tell your friends, I can't do this anymore. I don't know how I'm going to get through this because that's not going to get you anywhere. This specific issue might help because then you can narrow down on what to do to actually make it work. Okay, see, so think through that. The next big thing, uh, and this has helped me a lot, is list what you can control while at home. You hear that old adage of uh, control what you can control and kind of get rid of the rest. It's a lot easier said than done, uh, but there are things you could take away from that. So one, acknowledge your kids are not going to magically be awesome at this. If you have babies or toddlers, they do not know or understand why mommy or why daddy is working from home now. They know you're around a lot more often. And for them, this is awesome because now you are so available um, that they don't understand there's a cutoff, right? If you have older kids, uh, elementary, middle, um, they, or start to get it. My kids start to get that if daddy's doing this kind of thing, I'm working, but they still need a lot of attention. Um, and even small things, they need help with lunch, etc. And a high school kid might be a whole different uh, situation, but again, they're not going to magically just be amazing at this. So you have to set the expectation. You can't control that, but you might be able to control um, as an employee or self-employed worker might be a little bit about your schedule. Maybe it's how your meetings are set up. Uh, maybe you can block out an hour or two every day where you say, I'm not going to be available because I know that's a tough time for my kids or I always have to set up lunch for them. I cannot be bothered by anybody else. Let me do that and I will adjust my schedule. Um, it might be as a parent that something you can control might be um, how much preparation you do to get your kids out the door in the morning. Um, so we had to do a drastic change in how we did that when both of us were working from home because I might have to jump into a Zoom meeting. Um, and as you know, Zoom meetings, they have a very specific start time. You can't just kind of mosey in. Um, we have to do some prep where we lay out the clothes the night before, uh, do some prep on, getting the lunches ready, all that kind of thing. Um, but we had control over that. We couldn't just say, well, it's too much in the morning. And it might also be a homeowner as a renter. You might have control over the room. You might have control over the environment, the heating, the cooling, all that kind of stuff, the internet. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but that's something to consider. So um, as we're going through this, I want you to think through what is one change you can make this week? So starting today, going from a week from now, what is one thing you can change thinking through the things you can control through a specific problem that is uh, something that is very important to you and your sanity and your satisfaction and it's realistic to happen so you're not trying to overcommit. You're not saying, I'm going to change everything about this. Um, that works in movies. It doesn't really work in real life. A good way to fail is to set unrealistic expectations. That's why a lot of New Year's resolutions don't work because people say, I've never worked out my life. I'm going to work out every day from now on. That's probably not realistic. So you're going to commit to one change. You're going to write that down. Again, I'm doing this. Write it down. It helps to give yourself some accountability. So if you have somebody else 
uh, let's say another mom who's also having problems, swap that with the other person so they know what you're trying to change. And give yourself a week to just focus on that and think through what, did, what do you expect to feel like if this works, right? So at the end of that week, should you feel less tired? Uh, should you feel less stressed out? Should you feel like you have a little bit more control over the situation? Think through that because as you're going through the week, that'll help you get an idea if this is even worth the effort. I've moved meetings around, uh, so I would rarely have an important one when I knew distractions would be high. I've got a little bit more control over my schedule uh, than some people, uh, but I blocked out times that I know right after lunch is really tough for me, even from an energy perspective, um, going through this work from home thing, but also three o'clock to four o'clock every day is right when my kids are coming home from school and it is bonkers here. It doesn't mean I'm not still doing the work. Um, I'm still getting stuff done, but I'm not trying to schedule important like one-on-one -on -one discussions with anybody because guess what? That wouldn't go well. And then I'd feel bad and I feel like I'm letting everybody down, right? And I'd probably get frustrated and snap at my kids. That's how you set yourself up for failure. So I move some mediums around. All right, so that's a lot of things. Um, I hope um, this has been helpful, but as a quick recap, try to define expectations. You know what's a realistic win as a work from home parent, right? Pinpoint what the actual issue is. So don't make it really broad. Think through what is the thing I'm really bugged about? A lot of other things are probably just building off of that one main thing, right? List what you can control while working from home. If there's things you're not gonna be able to touch no matter what, it's really helpful to think, I can't worry about this because I'm never gonna be able to change this. So either that's gonna be a, a deal breaker for me and I'm not gonna be able to do it, or I'm gonna to have to work around it. But don't keep trying to change things that are way out of your control. Commit to one change this week, just one, right? You can do that. Anybody can make one change and make it so you know it's gonna be worth the impact. Don't do a small thing, do something kind of significant. It might be, I'm going to uh, get up a little bit earlier so I can work for an hour before most of my kids get up, or uh, I'm going to adjust some things. So I've got block of time in the afternoon where I'm not trying to work and be a mom or a dad at the same time. And then maybe I'll work a little bit later on to balance things out. All right, so I hope that's a lot of help. That's a lot of things to just throw at you. Um, I hope you can find me um, at instafather.com. Again, name's Andy Shaw. Uh, I've got the new mom's guide to new dads and I'm hoping uh, that we can talk sometime soon. I love talking about parenting, being an involved dad, being an involved mom, and I appreciate it. And hopefully you can find some help and some sanity at home. Thank you.